It's much more fun. Judith Glover breaks the law of a lifetime and tells an Irish story. Here we go. Here we go. Hey! Nice one, Judith. Uh, can you hear me at the back? Is it okay? You can hear? No. One, two, three, can you hear me out the back? If everybody stays a bit silent on this one, it's not as bad as mine. Otherwise, Judith's lovely voice will not come to the back. Right, um, I've got two short stories here for you. And I can't do an Irish accent, so um, you have to put up with it as it is. Um, I could possibly do a Liverpudlian one, but that's about the best I can. Um, now, you can't have St. Patrick's Night without a story about um, a priest and also a story about an Irish fairy. So the first one is called The Confession Box. This is a story of an old kindly priest who was doing his usual duty on a wet, because it's always wet in Ireland, Saturday afternoon, and he was sitting in his confessional box. He'd been sitting in the box for five and a half long hours from 2 p.m. to 7.30. He'd only had three customers in that whole day. He was dying of the hunger, freezing with the cold, and mad for a good, strong mug of tea with a drop of the hard stuff. He was dreaming of getting his feet up by the fire at the priest's house. On Saturday nights, his supper was cooked by Mrs O'Shea. She was a good woman, and she didn't mind him smoking. Either not, uh, uh, either not like the old witch, his housekeeper. As the church clock struck the half hour, he went out into the dark church that had just one light in the central aisle. He staggered down the aisle and got to the door and was just making to lock up when this man came leaping up the steps and burst past him into the church. The old priest sighed as he watched the man rush down the aisle, turn left and straight into the confession box. There you are now. I've been here all afternoon and only three have been and now this lad wants to be heard. The priest gave a longing look at the priest's house and turned and went back into the church, down the aisle, turned left, got into the priest's cubicle of the confessional. What can I do? I must hear the poor soul, he thought. Now you could see the figure through the grill Oh, he must have had some terrible sins to be rushing in like this. I'll just wait and give him some time to gather his thoughts and contemplate his sins. So he waited, and he waited, and he kept looking at the figure. After a while, he looked through the grill and could see the chap sitting there, but without a sound being uttered. So he waited some more. <laughs> grabbed the priest, as his patience was wearing thin and that mug of tea was burning on his mind. Still no response. The priest wondered if he'd gone to sleep, or worse still, struck dumb by the weight of his sins. The priest was now a bit agitated and still not a stir or a word. Ahem, he said again, but still no response. Now you see, he was a kind old priest and he wanted to give the man as much time as he needed, but supper at the priest's house would be getting spoilt. So in desperation, he knocked on the wooden wall between them with the knuckles, rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. 
Suddenly, the man on the other side came to life. And there was his voice from the other side of the grill. Ah, man, you needn't be knocking and disturbing me. There's no paper in here either. <laughs> the other one is called Fairy Hill. I'm going to tell you now about a fairy on the Fairy Hill. Now there's not many mountains where I live. In fact, there's only one big hill. And high on this hill is a little thatched cottage where a little old lady lives all alone. Now you'll remember we had a right cold winter last year with a terrible wind and snow. Now it was late November and in that little cottage, high on the hill, the little old woman was sitting by the fire. There were big flames going up the chimney. Her husband's been gone the last 45 years, and all she had is her old tomcat called Bill. The old cat lay toasting himself by the embers, rolling over every now and then to bake the other side. The only sound was tick-tock of the old grandfather clock in the kitchen and the click-clack of the knitting needles as she knitted herself some new socks. Now you've got the scene in your mind, the wind howling round the, the cottage, the fat, toasting old tomcat, the little old woman sat by the fire, tick-tock, click-clack. Well, all of a sudden, there was a puff of smoke from the chimney and there stood, in the middle of the floor, a little wee fairy with a wand in her hand about 12 inches long. Well, the old woman's heart did a dance of fright and she screamed while the cat shifted itself marginally and let out a hiss. Now, the fairy said, Oh, Mrs Murphy, there's not no welcome to good fortune. Sure, you've been a good woman all your life, doing many good deeds for others. You've spent many a young, long year up here on your own, but the time is drawing to a close. I'm here to reward you for a good life so you can have one wish. No, make it two. Oh, no, my days for excitement are over. I've no need for wishes. I have a good fire, plenty of food, my old cat for company. I'm contented enough. The fairy looked her in the eye and said, there's just got to be a little flicker there for the last thrill. But you must be quick, mine. Time's running out. The woman let out a long sigh, a sigh and then said, well, maybe. Ever since I was a little girl growing up, I've always wanted to be a princess. That's your wish, said the fairy, and with a swoosh of that little wand, there was a most beautiful young princess, sat there in the chair, a beautiful tiara, a gown, wavy hair, sparkling slippers. The old lady looked down and gasped at the transformation. Her rheumatics were gone, she had an 18 inch waist, and it was better than she could have hoped for. Now come on then, said the fairy, I must go shortly. You need to make your second wish. Oh, I can't think of anything. And then she looked at her mystified old Tom Cat Bill. Well, maybe there's one thing. Could you turn my old Tom Cat Bill into a fine young prince? Oh, at last, said the fairy, and with another swish of the wand, there on the cobble floor stood the finest, most handsome young prince, dressed in a tuxedo and shiny shoes. And the fairy was gone. The handsome prince stepped forward and took her by the hands and held her in his arms in the middle of the floor. He gazed into her eyes and said, I bet you're sorry now you had me neutered. 